Hello YouTube, this is William. Uh, today I am going to take this vintage Collins little hatchet and replace the handle, rehang it with this handle. Uh, I got it, um, I'm not sure where I got it at. It was uh, probably a hardware store. Um, and I'm not even sure it's, it's uh, hickory, it may be ash. But basically what you're looking for is you're looking for a wood grain structure up and down. That's the strongest handle that uh, you can get, okay? Uh, you want to make sure that the grain structure is up and down on the handle. If it's not, and you get a handle like that, okay, what's going to happen is it's going to start delaminating. And you can see that it is cracked right here. And it'll start cracking, it'll go all the way up the handle, all right? So somebody had replaced this handle at one time, um, and uh, they got a poor choice of, um, of wood or handle. Uh, I don't know why any handle company would even produce something like this. Probably should have been caught at uh, quality control. But anyway, I'm going to remove this handle, and I'm going to hang it with that one, hopefully today. And uh, we're going to put this vintage Collins on kind of... A partial to Collins axis for some reason I don't know maybe it's my name but uh, I just love vintage Collins uh, axis and I've, I've got quite a collection going but anyway we're gonna try to rehang this one and we're gonna put it in our kit uh, make a good little uh, little camp hatchet and uh, put it back to work so here we go The reason I'm using the screwdriver is because I don't want to mess up a chisel. Somebody's going to come to and say, hey, you should use a chisel. I don't want to mess up my chisel. So I'm using the screwdriver because I don't care if a screwdriver gets messed up. And I'm just seeing where it's hitting that and just easing that off and slowly working my way down the, the handle. Hope you guys can hear me over the fans. It's just too hot to work in here without fans. checking to make sure that the handle is plumb with the axe head just using the eye. You can see where it's hitting on the edges right here. So we just kind of blend that on down. Take the knife. So 
sometimes when they try to splinter it, it's kiln dried wood. It's so dry that it wants to just kind of splinter out. You have to cut it from the side. Instead of cutting it this way where it'll flake out, you cut it from the side. That way you cut those fibers instead of letting the fibers didn't take what they want to do. You're just manip manipulating the, the, the wood. Wish I had another wooden mallet. See how it's starting to fit in there now if I find the camera. Starting to curl, so we're finding out where we're hitting again. See if we can't get a good seat on that. And see how this is sitting proud you want that so this is going to be a little bit wider than the eye so it'll actually hold it a little bit better that actually looks really good got a good seat on it Okay, I'm going to take some epoxy, I'm going to put some epoxy on this and then we're going to... Alright, uh, it's dried, so I'm going to just take the bandsaw and just cut it off even with the top. See how I got it sitting proud about an eighth inch on top. We're going to take the little wooden wedge and put it on the angle. Not the wooden, but the metal. The metal. Just kind of chamfer the, the top a little bit. Clean up that, it's kind of curled underneath there.
Well, other than just doing the sanding and the boil linseed applications, I think it's ready to be used. Bringing back the old. <laughs> the older you get, the more you appreciate older things. Um, so anyway, I'm going to remove the varnish off of it and um, so it doesn't cause blisters. Varnish is, is really bad on, on tools, uh, especially with your hands because they cause a lot of blisters and, and discomfort things. So I'm going to take some sandpaper, sand it down, get all the varnish off of it. You can, I have seen them take uh, sharp edges. I mean, if you have a sharp edge knife, you can actually see the varnish coming off of it. Uh, the old timers, what they would use is they would just use a broken piece of glass to do that. But um, anything that's, that's like that, uh, just, as long as you get the varnish off, then once you do that, uh, heat the handle up or warm it up a little bit with a heat gun or a hair dryer or near a fire or something like that. Warm the wood so it expands those fibers. And then when you apply the boil linseed oil, then it soaks it in. It sucks it in as the wood cools. And just do that many times and ever so often do it again. It depends on how often you use it, how dry your climate is, a lot of things of how often you do it. You just go by feel. If it looks like it needs some, some more linseed oil on it, then do that. Um, I mean, you can't apply too much. I mean, it's as long as you wipe it off and don't leave a residue on it, you're great. You're fine. All right. So I appreciate you guys joining me on this, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, got some tips and pointers on it, and um, hope you can salvage a, a, an old trusted. See, it still has a label on it. Isn't that cool? Twenty bucks at a yard sale. <laughs> what a deal! All right, till the next one. You guys get in the backyard with a little stick. Be sure and take a child with you. Get the opportunity, and don't forget those plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. We'll catch you again real soon.